Oh no, what if it fell on that ladder? When should I add fish? When you see this, really. No substrate, lots of poop. All these ones are on the website now. So the shrimp are really taking off, the best guppies in the world. This is the fun part of my job. Oh no! How about them blood worms, yeah? This is, you know, some crypts looking pretty good. Our lights are crazy good and built like a tank. What if it fell on the corner? Like, what happens then? Hey everybody, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, I'm in the fish room. We're kind of just doing an update with a lot of stuff going on, talking about what I've been changing, and I want to talk about algae. And I think my goal is always to teach you something, so I think today we're going to try and teach you about algae. For the most part, look, I've been sick. I had COVID, then I gave it to my wife, and then I had an event to do, and so it's been two or three weeks. I've been in here, I've been working. I couldn't really speak because I lost my voice from speaking at the event, and then also uh, from COVID. So. Videos didn't really come out, but I've been doing some work like there's a bunch of substrate and uh, You know, so like this tank, we'll start here with some algae This tank was running very clear. It just had these six fish But they would hide all the time, right? That's all they were doing is hiding and There was no substrate in there and it was clean and clear Once I added the substrate usually there's a little bit of debris in the substrate that really fueled the algae and with the lights, the water's actually turning green a little bit, and we've got all this algae in here. Now, a lot of people, what they do is they go, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. And 100% I agree. But, that is also what you want to see for a seasoned aquarium. When people ask me, when should I add fish? When you see this, really, that's what you should be doing. This will reseed on its own. It will, over time, like algae itself is consuming nutrients. Eventually it's going to run out of nutrients and when it does it starts to recede and you'll get very clear looking tanks long term. Short term looks terrible. So could I get in there and clean that and put a UV sterilizer in? Yes. Will I probably put a UV sterilizer at some point? Yes, probably will because it's hard to get rid of green water. But this brown diatom algae, very easy to scrape off. I could just put in a couple of fish to eat it, no problem. I'll show you that in a second. But the fish that were hiding all the time are now super out and about. You see how they're schooling around doing their thing and they're starting to color up a little bit. They're still skittish, but this is what I want to see. The fish are healthy. Now, eventually it's going to be something like this right here where, you know, there's that blackberry algae on the back, but all the plants and everything. Here's the eel. He's, he's going, hey, dad, how about them blood worms? Yeah? Yeah? How about that? So... You know, something like this is what you're looking to achieve long term. This is one of the longest setup tanks. Where this one's still kind of new, and we're seeing here. Oh no! Don't chase that shrimp! How dare you? We're seeing here that we've got lots of green spot algae on the glass, and we've got on the plant. Now a lot of people, how do you fix that? In my opinion, how I fix this is I get more plants going. Yes, there's some anubias and. That's all there's going on, but as they expand, or if I add a plant, they will do much better. So here we've got a little bit of algae kind of at the bottom, that clot of four algae, I can pull that out. I need to get some of this plant out of there. And then up here, you see how it keeps bouncing to the front. We're trying to keep it to the behind the rocks. We did add a second younger pair of these like saffron mollies. I'm waiting to see some babies kick out. Um, still, still no babies or uh, colored up Cypochromus. The male's kind of being a real pain. He chases everybody around. Let's see if there's any, uh, are you holding? Nope, you're just getting bullied, aren't you? So that's kind of what's going on there. Need to put more fertilizer in. How can you tell they need more fertilizer, Corey? Because look at the plant leaves. You see how they're getting chewed on? The snails, which everyone goes, oh my gosh, snails are terrible. They only eat dying plant matter. So they're eating it because I'm not quite having enough fertilizer. Why don't you have enough fertilizer, Corey? Well, too, I am dosing Easy Green, but there's not very many fish. Compared to this 150 gallon tank, not a lot of fish going on. So I need to put way more fish and way more load in there or dose way more Easy Green. That's what it's telling me. Uh, so I will be dosing some more Easy Green to give it a little helping hand. Now over here, Definitely got some algae going on down here. These tanks have been sitting here forever and we've just been letting cherry shrimps kind of do their thing and that's what they're doing. But eventually we'll take all of that out. Uh, this tank, 
was absolutely covered in duckweed. In fact, the sponge filter is super full. That's why it's kind of glug glugging, even though it's got the, the easy flow system on there. Got the shabunkins though, and we're, we might be, you know, we got a little bit of duckweed on the overflow back there. But in terms of this, kind of ready to go to start, you know, I want to get all the, rid of all the duckweed. There's a little bit of duckweed over here. And just really get this whole building duckweed free. That's, that's kind of the goal. These Alfrero Colstratus have been making babies, as you can see. They got that nice little blue eye that you can catch in the blue side to them. They're also called the Knife Live Bear. So it's kind of cool to have, in my opinion, a Killy slash uh, Tetra like fish that gives birth to live fish. Let me see if I can get that. Where's that one? I think you're looking extra cool, this one right here. A nice female. But the algae in this tank, as you can see, relatively low load. We've got a little bit of algae down there. That's it. No substrate, lots of poop. This is, so in my opinion, this is the key. When people say, I wanna go natural aquarium, my response is this poop in your substrate. Just get this. All these little snail poopins and, and fish poopins. Get that mixed into here and plants will start going bananas. That's, that's what I like to see because this is what happens in nature over time. Yes, leaves and other stuff fall in and break down, but I like this because I can control it. Over here, we've got the molly station going. Haven't spread out the gravel or anything. Light's pretty intense. It's actually doubled up right there. So right under the light, we're making that algae over there. And you can see we're making lots of green algae on the sides. That's okay. Just want the mollies to hang out and uh, kind of do their thing. Oh, here we can get a quick glimpse of the uh, red-tailed reticulated hillstream loaches. Now, again, I've got kind of high light algae going on here, not enough plants. And I guess that's the one thing. People, when they get algae, they go, oh my gosh, I need to stop fertilizing. And really, it's usually not fertilizer. It's more plants and mostly more fertilizer. Uh, in this case, it's definitely more plants. I finally got balloon mollies in. I'm super stoked. I know some people don't like them, but I just love these guys. I really love the body shape. You can see I've kind of gone balloon molly crazy. Um, got the substrate in here, so that's good. And this was this substrate's really dirty. It wasn't rinsed, so not my favorite. But uh, now I'm kind of ready to get a little more substrate in there and plant it. I've got a few more boxes of it down there to work with. So kind of same thing over here. Just got a base layer in. Got a couple floating plants just to give some cover uh, for the fry that are growing up of the glass belly guppies that we bought. And then over here. We've got these really good female rice fish. I don't think there's a male around. I should probably go find them a male one of these days. And uh, we've got the, the blueberry snail kind of doing its thing. I haven't seen any babies yet. Enhance, there we go, enhance. So they're, you know, going around eating algae for me and doing their thing. Down here was a real big algae farm. I got some uh, Sanrio endlers. I call them the orange line endlers. Just something to play with. Got those off Dan's fish as well. And uh, yeah, so then we go to Turtle Town over here. This is where you can definitely see there's no balance. There's no plants because the turtles will eat them. The snails definitely make these patterns in the algae. I come in here, I scrape it down. Uh, but really I want to get them in a pond so that we're not trying to see something through this glass and turn this into a tank that uh, is more viewable, like with plants and fish and, and all of that. So. Um, yeah, but when things start getting in balance, so like this tank over here has had horrible algae problems. I have not been removing the algae, and we can see here that it's starting to clear up on the front of the glass. So it's right here, but it used to be you couldn't see in. Now we're doing a lot better. Now it's, it's transitioning. Now we've got blue-green algae, so I need to dose for erythromycin, uh, which is maricin or API erythromycin and get that kind of battle one. Um, another female right here holding babies. And you can see the fry are just, you know, raising up. Like that's sellable size, like all these little guys. So try not to disturb the ecosystem too much in there, but uh, you know, if you leave it long enough, it will. And I realize it still looks bad. I'm not saying it looks good, but when, I, when, when you beat algae naturally, that's when 
it, it stays looking good for a long time. Same here, I had a bunch of hair algae. So I removed the big thing. The plants were too close to the light and it was growing a bunch of hair algae right at the top. Remove that and it's fixed a lot of it. I still have some hair algae right back here that I'm working on. But now we're kind of turning the tide. And then I want to show this tank right here. Look how good these Crypt One Dead Eye Reds are doing. This, in my opinion, this is, you know, some Crypts looking pretty good. And when a tank starts to balance out, in my opinion, starting to, it's starting to look pretty good. Look at the algae, like there's basically not very much algae on any of the Nubius. Like we've got the black Moscow guppies and four billion cherry shrimps everywhere. This is settling in to be like, hey, I'm really gonna enjoy this tank. And this is what I want all my tanks to be basically. It's something of this form. Uh, but as you see, there's been failures like over here. I think the substrate, the coarser sand, is just not doing it. Same, these are the same exact plants, same water. I dosed them at the same time. They had more time to grow, tons more fish. You know, this is just endlers instead of, or no, these are just guppies, and those are guppies. And they've got orange shrimp and red shrimp. In theory, should be very similar. And, and we only had crypts in there and didn't have those. So like, you know, same thing over here. These red one dead eye crypts, doing better than the ones over we just saw, they're not getting as big because we've got all this Vallisneria blocking the light. This one, kind of pulling ahead, but the rest, you know, so the plants and the layout and, and all that have a huge, you can all see there's no algae in here at all because the plant load is just, it just gobbles up anything. Then again, we go to Turtle Town, you know, I spend five minutes scraping that down. Turtles look great, but no live plants, no balance. You get algae. In here, still struggling with the plants. I need to, I need more poop factor. We're getting it. You can see the poop factor in the, the gravel here starting to build up, which is good. But you can see the plants, they're searching for it. You see how the plant goes deeper and deeper? where the poop is, you know, like the poop basically builds up, it sifts through the rocks and kind of starts building up from the bottom. And it's going, hey, that's where that food is. Let me get down there. And as this gets more and more filled with poop, it'll do better. But uh, I was noticing yesterday, or not yesterday, maybe the day before when I was feeding, we put the blue velvet shrimp in here and boy, howdy, have they taken off. Like we only put like 20 in here and you can just see them kind of everywhere you look, there's like 20. So the shrimp are really taking off, the best guppies in the world, uh, producing fry and they're starting to grow up, so that's working out. Now it's a case of get these plants to really start thriving, and they do when they, when they hit it. And that's all, well, in my opinion, that's always gonna be a problem when you put brand new substrate and established plants in and you hope for the best. Um, that's why I like to just kind of get things going really pretty poopy. You can see here with the turtles with the higher load, we totally have the poop layer. Like plants, if I was to take turtles out of here and turn this into a planted tank, the plants will thrive because it's right at the surface. They don't have to go in deep like you're seeing. You know, you're seeing, I'm trying to show examples like this plant, it made a new plant and it went deep. So plants will search out the nutrients and uh, you know that's just something to know so yes could I have used a, an enriched substrate like an ADA soil or a fluol stratum or something like that yes I could have but you know I like to have I just enjoy this look I, I like the look I like the ease it's easy to clean if I need to um, it lets the poop down in wow look at shrimp mountain right there just look at the amount of shrimp. Hey, get out of the way, fish. We're looking at shrimps. There's a really mixed in there. You really got to get out of there, buddy. So, yeah. Over here, you can kind of see that uh, through the neglect and not dosing enough, my hygro pinnatifida fell back while I, was, uh, while I was in Germany and then COVID. And then, um, but, you know, the plants, the crypts are doing okay. Got a mama. A mama mono right here. Got a little bit of hair algae I can pull out. 
And I, I guess my, my, what is my takeaway trying to be here? My takeaway is don't freak out about the algae. Work with it. Learn from it. And I know I say that all the time, but people join the channel all the time and they don't get to hear the same things. Here's another good example of where is the plant growing? You see how it just goes, like so this is Phallocinaria. Uh, no, this is uh, Dwarf Sagittarian here. And you see how like this plant goes from here to here and then it goes to here and here and here and here. And you can see the, like, as I call it, the, the poop layer. It's, this tank's doing pretty good. Like it's got a decent poop layer going in. Uh, and this was, you know, all new substrate at the same time. Heavier load though, we just have way more fish. And so I reached that poop load faster. And uh, yeah, so you can see if you're ever trying to grow Valisneria, dwarf, uh, or a dwarf chain sword, you can see the plant will kind of go under and pop up, and you can see that next one's popping up way over here. You can see my Corydoras hastatus kind of schooling midwater with these uh, Limias, Perugiae's. I can't tell if I absolutely love this fish or I'm over it. I love the color. I don't like how fast and the males chase so much, but man, I do like them. I'm still waiting for these guys to start breeding the buffalo head cichlids right there. It's cool to make the, the bettas happen. Really what I need to do in here is I need to put a few few more snails, few algae eaters, and just treat for that with the antibiotic. So when I treat blue green algae, you can use uh, erythromycin, mericin, or you can use uh, slime out. They're all basically an antibiotic made to do this. So I'll be doing that today. I'm gonna feed today too. Oh, I feed every day, but that's on the agenda still. Uh, over here, what am I doing? Oh, there we go. Over here, you can see this dwarf Sagittarius has absolutely gone crazy. Again, we can see kind of the root structure. You can see roots here. And, you know, kind of the, the poop layer is, is right about here. So you can see they go deeper. They go deeper to seek that out. Whereas as it builds up, they don't go as deep. You can see this one right here, like not as deep. And this one was deeper, probably a more mature plant. So, you know, I just, I like to try and observe and see what's going on and uh, mostly update you guys too. That's one of the big things that I like to do is just update. You can see I've still got a Dan's fish thing right there. It came while I had COVID because I had ordered it not knowing I had COVID and then it showed up and I had to put it away regardless. Lots of test products. You can see some on the shelf or on the table there. There's uh, camera equipment. I've been trying to take more pictures. I'm working on the website for you guys as well. Uh, longevity study. Like I've had these, um, I've had these crypts and things stuck in, in tissue culture. We sell tissue culture. All these ones are on the website now. Um, I was playing with them and testing them. But they're holding up pretty well. I've just left them on this table where they get some sunlight and everything. And, uh, you know, if you want Kripnuri, which is a cool, like this one's super grown in at this point. Uh, we've got some, some different uses. Let's see if I can get that or be viewable. There you go. When it sits for a super long time, you start seeing that on the bottom. Still totally viable. Yeah, things. So these have been sitting here for like six weeks, maybe. And then you've got this uh, hair grass. Look at the variants. These are all ordered at the same time, but look at the variants just from like lighting where they sat and got light. So this one you've got, you know, roots grown in and uh, not hitting the top. Then you've got, oh my gosh, this thing is full. Oh my gosh, this thing's full. And these guys are ready to be planted once I find some time there. But mostly I also like to do like, so, you know, here's a good example of no matter what you do, tissue culture, sterile, here's, I'm, I'm just doing this so you can see to the top here. Here's three, I ordered three. All the exact same time, same manufacturer, and you go, wow, look at this. This one's going, all right, that's still good for your money. And then this one's like, hey, what happened? This one's kind of not good. All manufacturers, same point. So that's just, when you're dealing with living things, this is why, like, you'd love to see this, you're okay with seeing this, we would be refunding you and sending you another one on this one. 
and we order them all at the same time. And if this, I mean, this has been here for six weeks, so everything we're gonna send out is gonna look better than that for sure. It's gonna look in between these basically. Uh, and it won't be this full, it'll be more like, and here's another example, right? Here's these two, super duper full. This one kind of sat on its side and did grow, but look at the root structure. Going crazy town, the root structure, not so crazy town on the buttes. Like it's still great. This is still incredible value for like the 15 bucks. This is just, oh my gosh, I guess I got two for the price of one after it grew for six weeks. So one thing I do like about tissue cultures for me personally, I can usually let them sit. Most of them will do good or do well. And in this instance, let's say you bought three, right? And you didn't plant them for a while and you go, oh man, or, or that one's still viable. So let's say you did these three crypts and you're going, oh man, like I lost one. Like, well, even if you just let them sit, you still have like, this is like two or three pots worth or containers worth. And then this one is like, eh, like one, one and a half. So you'd still, you're still better off even if you lost one after six weeks. And that's what Dean and I noticed. You can just let them sit. You pick them up and you have a project. If you get delayed, it's not a problem. Um, you don't have to plant them right away. So that works better for some people. Been working on, uh, working on specifications for products. Got another laptop out here so I can build more content for you guys. Here's food. This is the Chris and Ollie food, but it came and it just got beat internationally. So we're giving it to employees and stuff. You can just see like, what happened to this thing? It's like they just, they Ace ventura it for sure on the way over. So. Yeah, what else do I got going on that I know? Mystery, yeah, there's that mystery liquid testing out maybe in addition for Easy Green. Um, yeah, look how bad that tank looks. Why do I do that to myself? Let me show how bad that looks. I think I love it because in five minutes I can have that looking way better because a little net will just net all that right out. And, uh, oh yeah, I put second light on all of these tanks so they're they went through a process of like, they need to be dialed down. They're pretty short and need to get fish, need to get balance. Um, oh, and I replaced all the, well, not all of them, but most all the sponge filters in there now have the easy flows. So, you know, some of that just takes work. Like I spent hours just taking sponge filters out, retrofitting, cutting them down, making them a little bit shorter, and just getting the flow going in all of these. And you can see I was doing more substrate work. I was using the PVC cutters to cut them down. Here's easy flow kits. Um, so yeah, just on, on a scale like this, like, oh yeah, a new tank. This tank won't be sitting here. This is, I'm gonna shoot a video for you guys and take PAR readings uh, of our light. So the plan is to actually do the PAR. Now, I don't wanna call it study, it's not a study, but readings. Where'd my super do cool new PAR meter go? Oh, I think it's over here. So I now own two PAR meters. And uh, one is specifically made for underwater use. So let me move some of this stuff right here. So this is the one I had for the last few years. And then I, re I learned they made one uh, specifically underwater. It says underwater. And so that was another 600 and some dollars. I also bought this stainless or aluminum plate and uh, with a, a level so I can get truly accurate uh, readings. And so that's a project, Dean's coming over tomorrow. That's our project is to basically make a sales video for our lights and do all the PAR readings and that kind of stuff. And we're gonna use that tank over there. So we're gonna do it with dry air and with water and all of that and, and map it out. I bought stuff to do it and uh, you know, a long time coming. So, you know, that's uh, just more, I don't know, I would say like more work that I haven't been getting done. I also wanna get, I wanna get uh, this mounted, the DB meter. You guys might've seen the Facebook video and stuff I've been doing, but I wanna do all the, I wanna show you guys all the how loud the air pumps, or most actually I should say how quiet the air pumps are and make a full video on the air pumps and kind of the benefits. And what I've noticed as a company, we're really bad. We make a good product. We're really bad at showing everybody what it can do. Um, I was taking pictures, hooking these up to like battery banks and stuff and, and just, 
I basically I go through a product and I work with it and I get it to be amazing, and then I hand it off and not everyone knows all the benefits because we didn't put it on the box. So I'm going to water this plant because I've forgotten like all week and I keep laying in bed going, oh my gosh, I didn't water the plant. What am I doing? So I'm doing that on camera. I just grab some little water, give her a little drink. She'll probably take three of those today. She's thirsty. Yes, you can use Easy Green water slash uh, tank water to water your house plants, and they do amazing. All right, I want to give you give you one more for good measure. You're, I know that I've been forgetting, and with COVID, I was forgetful. So let's get you back to being happy. My plan is to feed and clean and test a couple products we're wa we've been waiting on for me to test. Water change system just turned on. There we go. Yeah, if, yeah, I gotta shoot all the lighting stuff. That's what I want. I wanna make a video cause like, I just don't think enough people know that like our lights are crazy, in my opinion, crazy good and built like a tank and like are highly, highly water resistant. I wouldn't take many brands and just, just do this. Like I can walk away. Like I've tested these under these conditions for so long because I wanted to build, as I call it, a bulletproof light. You know, we increased the thickness of the aluminum. We uh, made the LEDs more efficient. We made it so it didn't get hot and burn you. It's so like the hot, the temperature up here doesn't burn you. It runs very cool, right? Well, not very cool all the time, but much cooler than competitors. Um, we made it so that the extension brackets, which aren't on this right now, um, but they go up to the next size. So a three foot light, the brackets will make it fit a four foot tank. Every light we have fits the next size. Uh, adjustable lighting that you can hop on the forum or talk with other people. Let me grab a, a, uh, a thing. So you might, you might've been looking at that going, you know, that don't seem that bright, Corey. Why, why do we pay the money? This is 20%. I've got to set to 20%. We can, we can crank this thing, like, and then I'll be growing too much algae. I'm already not putting enough fertilizer in there. But, yeah, I'm, I was running that at 20%. You've got a nighttime mode. You can, uh, you can adjust the nighttime mode if you want. So you can have a, a nice chill nighttime mode. Or you can crank it up. And then you've got off. And I just use them on Wi-Fi timers. And let me turn that back down like 20%. You know, but it goes all the way from 10 and every 10%. So you can talk with other Aquarius and go, hey, you might be going, ooh, are the settings the same for the light between, you know, your crypt tanks that you're struggling with? And I can, on these ones, I, I have mostly the old ones, so I don't think I, you know, let me, let me pull one up here. Oh, no, yeah, 30%. So this tank's running at 30% to grow that crypt. I could crank it. You know, now we're, we're super high. It's not really showing on camera though. Oh, I know why. <laughs> that was for this one. So yeah, I can make that super duper bright. Let me turn that back down to 30. Let me get the right, uh, it's on this side. So yeah, we're, running, we're actually running 50% on this bad boy, so. You know, maybe you've got a 40 breeder and you want Crypt One Dead Eye that look like that. Maybe you run 50%. And that's my goal. My goal is that we can compare numbers. We can use that to ad adjust our own fish room, other people's tanks. And, uh, you know, the, the cord's over 12 feet long. I just wanted to make a three-year warranty. I wanted to make a light that would just... Just do what I need to do. That's all I wanted. It's got a high CRI, so the color rendering index, very good at showing light. I don't like tons of blue. I like it to be a little more sunny day. Um, and that's just a preference. You can, you know, blue lights look good on neons and stuff like that. What else? Yeah, we, you know, I optimize for plant growth, three year warranty, highly water resistant as proving on camera right now. Uh, the remote 
extra long power cable, adjustable light intensity. What else? I, I know there I know there's some secret stuff probably too, but yeah, it's mostly that. And I want to say that our warranty, I think, carries our light. And what I mean by that is when a competitor light breaks, usually you have to really prove that it broke and then you might have to send it in and then they'll send you one. Whereas uh, ours, you just have to prove with a, like a cell phone that it's not working. We'll send you one out priority that day. Boom. Our customers will take care of you. Also, you know, I can, you know, you can see there. I can put it in more as well. So my, my, my original goal was actually if your cat knocked it in or you dropped it in or something like that, uh, because of the store with old Phoenix lights, we had the stingrays and if they did that, they would just go boom and gone. And you'd be like, wow, there went 70 bucks. Um, so yeah, I even spent time to go, how long should this amount of cord be? How? long like an 800 gallon it would get the remote wet and the remote's not water highly water resistant so i thought you know it's at two feet not many tanks are going to be deeper than two feet there will be some uh, but you don't want to put it four feet and have the remote like way down below behind the stand so you know all these little attention to detail um just working on it and we actually we take all the data and we make it better and as technology changes i'm working I'm waiting on some prototypes to see if we can make it better. So, you know, that's always if. Not, not it will, we have to see, because sometimes new technology is not better. So we're just always trying to improve. Oh, we also put the LEDs much closer to the end. There's a lot of lights that will, like, call us a 36 inch light and the LEDs stop here. Um, so it's, as you can see, you know, basically end to end on that. And uh, yeah, so maybe I'll just keep doing this in videos. It, you know, you can't run this light underwater full time. Like that's not gonna work. It's not made to be an underwater light. But I do love showing off how water resistant and how, you know, tanky it is. Like, so maybe you didn't drop it in the water. Maybe instead, let me get that water out of there. Maybe instead it falls off, right? And you're just like, oh no. Like it's, we did all this testing. I threw them across the, the driveway. Like, I wanted to make sure they weren't gonna have a problem. Because I gotta ship these things too. And I, we were having problems with them getting bent in shipping. And you're like, oh no, what if it fell on that ladder? So yeah, this is the fun part of my job where I'm like, what if it fell on the corner? Like, what, what happens then? Like you hit the stand, the thing. So that's, I would say this is a lot of the difference. Like, yes, there's light and the color output and the ease of use and that kind of stuff. But when I buy a piece of equipment, I want it to last basically forever. And we come right out the gate with three-year warranty. And I've tested a lot of the lights. They can't, they can't hold up to this. You can even do this. Like we started doing, uh, we started doing tests where we stood on them. Like you put it there. That's right. I got the Crocs on. You start. You know, and you can start standing on an end, like, I'm a, I'm a heavy dude, obviously, and I'm standing on this end right here. So they, they just will take a beating, and that's why we kept increasing and just, like, that sounded horrible. It's fine. Literally, back in the water. I feel like that's the best sales pitch I can put on these lights, is like, at a certain point, like a car is a car, a light is a light. And then if I just showed you a car like continually crashing and just shaking it off and providing you ultimate value long term, I think that's the win. Because there's always going to be a new app, a new slightly different color temperature, a new slightly thing. There won't always be an aquarium co-op guarantee with a guy that literally tries to break his lights. But most companies are going, well, how long will it last till I buy another one? I literally, we set out go, can we make this last forever and we'll gain a reputation of our stuff's just great? Yeah, so enough with the light. I know it's a sales pitch. I like selling stuff because it allows us to do the next project and test the next thing. And I'm crazy about trying to get perfection for everybody. I view it as my job, which I would think more, more places would think that. And uh, that's not just some special prototype, by the way. 
you can go to our store or anything and ask them to do any light. I can just, like here's four footers, it doesn't matter. Just to, well, I got food on this one. I'll put the food in there, but I think this guy can go in. Even with the power cord, power cord's in, like it don't matter. Officially though, only higher, highly water resistant. Unofficially, I've tested these things and done way too much to them that I'm very proud of them. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of lights. I see a lot of, you know, I see some people recommending $600 lights. And, uh, you know. Oh, dang it. I had sand in one of the ends and it brought sand down here. So now I gotta clean that. But, yeah. Anyway, I, I've seen a lot of, I've seen some people recommending very high, high-end lights. And if you're into $600 lights, cool. But whenever I play with them, they're fairly fragile. And uh, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna do some videos with those kind of lights too. Like uh, if we go over here, I buy most competitor lights, not all of them, because some of them I just, I don't know, I just, I can tell they're clearly inferior, but like that light we saw in Germany, the four foot equivalent here is I think 500 and some dollars. So I bought a three footer just because I want to teach you guys about, you guys saw in the last German video, uh, the wholesale. I want to teach you guys about lighting spectrums. And so this light, you can't, like it's not going to go and fall in the water and do those things. Um, I had my address there. But this light was, I don't know, 300-ish? And the good news is it's part of R&D. Like I have to know what the competitor's lights will do, how they hold up and all of that, just so I can, when I can say like, I have not tested a light that I could put it through that abuse, and it shrugs it off like it's nothing. The closest one would be the Fluval 3.0 that we used to sell. That's the closest one, but it can't take that level of abuse. Like it, it doesn't have thicker housings and, and all of that kind of stuff that we've done to it, but that's my goal. So, all right, I think we taught a little bit about algae, basically wait on it and let it, let it do its thing adjust your lighting. Uh, these guys I have at 100%, I think. So I could turn them down and help fight this green algae a little bit. We'll get Dean in here. We'll shoot an actual video on the PAR ratings and we'll get that in a blog article and we'll get that on the website. And yeah, it's just, it's, the light's been out for over a year and I've just been so busy that I haven't, I haven't done the right marketing on it. And I guess I fell in love with the light and I was like, this thing's gonna sell itself. And it has, we sold insane amounts. But there's still people like, why would I buy this instead of the 30 or $40 light on Amazon? Like, because of what we just put it through. Like, it's gonna just last. That's the thing. You buy it once and it works. You get a network of people, you can share the data, all of that. So, all right. I'm gonna feed, I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning. You know, I gotta clean up bags of stuff and just got a haircut today, by the way. So I'm going to do all that and get ready for Dean. Oh, yeah, there's the photos I was taking. You can see I was showing people that, or the, uh, the goal was to show people you can run it from the battery backup. When this is off, obviously it won't run it. I wanted to run it all the way down so that I could get this. I'm trying to get this to blink at the right time and take the, the, the picture, but the flash is giving me a problem. But when it's full, it doesn't look as right. So I wanted to look, I wanted to be able to show this will charge this. And with this combo, you can go like a really long time. So that's a battery backup that charges, has its own battery backup. You, if you were to do that combo, now you're looking at days and days, especially if you put it in the, the saver mode. So now it's in, you know, in saver mode. Yeah, also that blue, you can adjust the strength of the pump, five different levels. So yeah, trying to capture that in picture form, because not everybody, I believe it or not, not everybody watches our videos. So yeah, always, always working on little doodads to make things better, hopefully. All right, well, thanks for hanging out. I know this video wasn't the average like, oh my God, crazy fish, things doing things. Instead it was like, hey, real life hit me, COVID, traveling, did an event. We'll put pictures of the event in here somewhere uh, in New Mexico, the fish store, good place. And uh, yeah, getting ready to shoot more videos. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the Germany stuff. And uh, now we'll be working here a little more. I've, I've also got a crazy secret project that is currently underway that I'll be involved in. Hopefully we'll be able to review, reveal in the next couple months, maybe sooner, depending on when this video comes out. But that is causing some travel and, and other stuff too. So 
I just can't share anything about it. Well, I, I can, I just don't want to. I want to be like, oh wow, crazy, you did that. So, thanks for hanging out, thanks for being members, thanks for buying from us, if you buy from us, or an RPP store. I appreciate that so much, and uh, yeah, get yourself one of these. These are my new favorite baseball bat. Maybe that's my marketing pitch now. I'll just say, they're baseball bats and not lights. I'm gonna have someone pitch me a baseball and hit it with it. <laughs> Maybe every video, I'm just gonna find another way to torture them. One day we're gonna break one, and then we're gonna go, oh, finally, it takes, it turns out it takes a catapult. I'm gonna ta task Dean with fine stuff that's clever that might break this thing. All right, we'll see you, bye-bye.